Joining us now to talk about the magic behind the scenes and some of the new innovative technology that makes sense, makes these fantasies look like reality, is Oscar-winning animator Hal Hickel of ILM. And so glad you're here with us today. We've been having fun uh, talking about these movies <laughs> as we've been pre preparing for this interview. Uh, let's start with Transformers. What does it take to make a Transformer come to life? You know, they're, they're really incredibly complex characters. Um, I think that's the first thing. All those little tiny moving parts. Uh, so moving them is difficult. Transforming them is difficult. That's the job of the animator who moves the character. Um, just building them. Our modelers have to sculpt them, if you will, in the computer. But all those little pieces have to be made to fit together and work. Uh, so it's like a, building a big puzzle. And it has to transform. Um, and then there's making it look realistic. So all the surfaces have to look like real car parts and metal and um, because it's ultimately it's going to be layered together with live action. It's going to go right alongside the, the actors and have to feel as real and alive as, as they do. So. so how does it start? I mean, is it, is it a thought or an idea and then you put pen to paper and it goes from there? Sure. It's words on a page in the script and then there's artwork. Um, the production designer, the uh, different art departments, our art department and ILM usually contributes in designing the character. Um, and then our modelers go to work making all the pieces in the computer. And that's when it becomes three-dimensional, something you can rotate and see from all sides. And then it has to be painted and rigged so the animators can move all the parts. Um, and then it's rendering. We have to light it in the computer. It's very analogous to real movie making. We make things, we paint them, we light them. We take pictures of them, if you will, that's rendering the images, and then we layer them together with the live action. So how long from start to finish can this take? You know, it depends on the project. Um, uh, usually we're on a picture for around a year, but shot production, actually producing the shots that go into the movie is more like six months, although uh, kind of an unfortunate trend for us right now in the industry is that those those schedules are shrinking. We have less and less time to do more and more because every film they're asking for more, more stuff. Now, you guys were also part of Cowboys and Aliens, with mm -hmm. just, which just hit the box office. Is there a difference between creating an alien and creating a Transformer? Sure, sure. And, you know, every project has its own unique challenges. But with something like the aliens in Cowboys and Aliens, you know, they're fleshy. So making a living, breathing creature that's fleshy versus, say, a robot has lots of technical challenges, but also lots of uh, creative challenges that are that are very different. And, um, you know, people have to believe when they look at an alien, even though it's something they've never seen before, they have to immediately believe that uh, if they could reach out and touch it, they'd know exactly what that would feel like. Oh, that would feel like wrinkly leather, or that would feel gooey, or, or whatever. So if, if we present something on screen and it's just immediately tactile to the audience, then, you know, we've done our job well. Now, we're seeing more and more in Transformers, Cowboys, and Aliens, human actors having to act with, yeah. you know, fake creatures. How do they do that as actors <laughs> where you're supposed to ask, act scared of a Transformer that doesn't really exist? Yeah, no, it's crazy. I mean, digital characters are becoming um, just as important as the live actors. We've got a movie like Transformers where the, where the robots really have as much screen time as the, as the actors do. And the actors, yeah, they have to pretend to react to something that isn't there in front of them. And it's a challenge, but, you know, acting is pretending anyways. I think it's just an extension of what, what they do so well already. And how much does it cost to bring one of these creatures to life? You know, uh, <laughs> pricing things isn't really my end of the business. I'm, I'm more the creative guy. Um, I think that it can run... Uh, you know, upwards of, of a million dollars a minute. I've heard that figure thrown around, but that's sort of an industry-wide figure. That's a not an A million dollars a figure. minute, uh, you know, uh, in, for of time in the movie or yeah, time in time development? Yeah, time in the movie, time in the movie, yeah. Okay. Screen time, screen time. And you also worked on Jurassic Park, which you say was a game changer in the industry in terms of special effects. What's next? Um, What's going to surprise us in terms of special effects innovations yeah. down the line? I mean, a lot of things in visual effects have become evolutionary rather than revolutionary. Jurassic Park was definitely a watershed moment, a revolution in, in effects. Nothing was really the same after that. Now we gen generally see improvements, like you'll see a movie like um, uh, Half-Blood Prince, Harry Potter and Half-Blood Prince, and the fire in the cave around Dumbledore and Harry. We did that. That was a big leap forward with CG fire, and we did some more CG pyrotechnics in Avatar, for instance. So those kinds of things that are very difficult to do, natural phenomenon like water, smoke, fire, those are the hardest things to do, and those are just gradually getting better and better. Um, in terms of something that's really going to just change the whole nature of visual effects, I don't know what that's going to be. Uh, we're all, you know, just kind of moving ahead, improving things as we go. But, what about 3D? 
3D has been a big change for us, um, for the whole industry. I'm still trying to see how it shakes out. You know, what, it feels to me like it's reaching a more natural place now where it's not like every movie has to be 3D. They're sort of finding the right uses for it. Um, and in the hands of a director like James Cameron, uh, it's a wonderful experience. So, you know, we're, um, we're excited when we get 3D projects. Um, but, you know, not every film we're doing nowadays is 3D. Um, Cowboys and Aliens wasn't, Super 8 wasn't, Rango wasn't, so. Now, I want to talk a little bit about your story because you just have this great uh, anecdote where you, when you were 12 years old, sent a letter to Lucas Films with some of your <laughs> ideas. They politely rejected you. Right. But 20 years later, you were there. These days, you know, how does somebody make that kind of a dream come true? Um, you know, it sounds cliche, but uh, sticking with it, obviously, in my case, finally <laughs> paid off. Um, uh, I think that um, it's important not to get discouraged because timing is huge, like a lot of industries. So if you're a young animator coming out of art school and you've sent out your demo reel to a bunch of companies and none of them have bit, send it out again in six months or four months or two months. You, you never know how things are going to shake out. I, I get uh, emails all the time from animators saying, you know, are you guys crewing up? What do you have going on? And sometimes I have to say, sorry, we're full, you know, or it's slow or whatever. And then two weeks later, oh, this huge project just came in and now suddenly we need people. So, you know, stick with it and just do it. You know, that's the, the old Nike motto. But um, really, uh, particularly in this day and age where equipment, computers, software is so, more, so much more accessible than it was years ago, there's really no reason not to just dive in. I mean, make, make flip books if you have to, you know, just get out there and, and do it. Don't, don't wait for somebody to invite you. Persistence, I think that probably works in a lot of industries. All right, yeah. Hal Hickel of Industrial Light and Magic, thanks so much for joining thanks us. Thanks for having I'll me. I'll see you at the movies.